going on, world? I am DJ Swaver, and I want to welcome you all to another episode of Ottoman Box Openings. On today's episode, we're going to be reviewing a sneaker that's near and dear to me. This shoe takes me back to the good days, to my middle school days. This is a shoe that when it came out in 1997, I had to have. Yes, we are talking about the Air Max 97 OG. The Silver Bullet. This shoe revolutionized the sneaker game when it came out. I cut so many yards to get this pair of shoes. You couldn't tell me shit when I had this pair of shoes on. We'll get to that in a minute, but right now, I need to speak my mind about Nike and their retro. We all know that Nike is the king of retro. Retro Jordans, retro Air Maxes, retro whatever. They bring stuff back out that was hot back in the day and expected to have a big bang in today's sneaker game. To me, it seems like the only time they really have a hit with retros is when they're OG colorways. For example, with Jordans. Whenever they come out with colorways that Jordan actually wore, those shoes sell out like that. But then Nike has a habit to bring out colorways that weren't even around when the shoe first came out. And they tend to sit on the shelf. I want to know, in that corporate meeting, who comes up with these ideas? To me, the bright idea would be to only come out with the colorways that the signature athlete actually wore. I don't even think they should call these colorways that never came out back in the day retros. You might as well call them a new shoe. So Nike, take it from a person that spends a lot of money on shoes. Stick to the stuff we love and that we're used to. Leave these new colorways on the cutting board and I guarantee your profits will go back up. We all know that Adidas has kind of found a, a chink in the Nike armor, so to speak. I truly honestly feel like retros are the only thing that's keeping Nike around. So if you're gonna do retros, do it right. Only come out with the colors that came out back in the day. With this being the 20 year anniversary of the 97 Air Max, I'm almost positive Nike is gonna find a way to mess this beautiful silhouette up. Coming out with whack colorways that nobody's gonna wear, which is gonna guarantee these new colorways are probably gonna be sitting on shelves after a while. Nike, I'm begging you, please stick to the colorways that we're used to. Signed, a consumer. Enough about that, let's get to this review. And here we have it, the 97 Air Max OG. They're calling it the Silver Bullet, but I'm almost 100% positive we didn't call it that back in the day in 1997. We called them the Dan O'Briens because this shoe was made popular by Dan O'Brien. The the decathlete who was popular in the 90s, won a couple of gold medals. So that's what I'm going to call it, the Dan O'Brien. Nike, y'all need to stop messing up names, man. If you're going to make something to OG, keep everything OG, even the name. See, I went with a size 13. That's my normal size. Nike has a tendency to not fluctuate in their sizes, so definitely in the Air Max 97s, you want to go true to size. The box price on this shoe was $170, which to me isn't bad for a piece of nostalgia. You spend $220 on foams and everything else, so $170 to me is a win. Anyways, enough about all that. Let's get to this sneaker review. This is one I am definitely excited about. And OMG! feel like I just hopped in a time machine and went back to middle school. Let me get this box out the way right now. Excuse me if I sound super excited. That's because I am. And here you have it. The 1997 Air Max OG Silver Bullet Dan O'Brien. Whatever you want to call it. But what you will call it is Fly. OMG. This shoe right here is a beast. Even after 20 years, it's still a beast. It was a quick strike, so that means it was released in like a few boutiques and limited quantities. This shoe sold out super fast. I mean, I was just lucky to uh, get my hands on it. St. Alfred's in Chicago had a size 13, and I gave them my credit card information so fast because I knew if I didn't pull the trigger right then and there, I was not going to have a chance to get this shoe for retail. The first thing you know about this shoe is the all-around air unit. That was what basically made this shoe so popular back in the day. Nike marketed it like you were walking on clouds, and it actually felt that good. I'm interested to see if it still feels that way. Nike has a tendency on OGs to use cheaper materials than the original, so they don't feel quite the same. But I don't care. I'm still going to, even if my feet are hurting in this shoe, I'm still going to rock this shoe. This shoe 
is still futuristic looking 20 years later. The main thing everybody knows is about that shoe, at least to me, was that red Nike check. You have gray and black all over the shoe, but these two red Nike checks are what add that extra pop to the shoe. Underneath it is like a, it's like a nylon, silver. I'm not quite sure if this shoe is all 3M. I'll have to take some pictures for y'all just to see, but I'm thinking it's 3M. That material definitely looks 3M-ish to me. You have that mesh going all the way around. I can tell why they call it silver bullet. I mean, it looks like a bullet. The aesthetics of the shoe give you a bullet feel to it. I know when I wore these back in the day, I felt like I was running fast like a bullet. You yeah, feel me? You couldn't tell me anything when I was wearing these shoes. I felt like I could bag any chick when I was wearing these shoes back in the day. I felt like the bullies could not catch me because I was super fast back in the day. I felt like I was Dan O'Brien. This shoe really made you feel like you were the shit. And right now, I feel like I'm the shit because I have this shoe. No extra lace options. They came with the standard gray laces, but I mean, what else do you need extra to add a pop to the shoe this shoe is already dope in itself you have the nike brand on the tongue that another red check that just sets it off that all around air unit on the insides oh my gosh i mean i don't know what else to say about this shoe but sheesh my only thing is i know with this being the 20th anniversary of this shoe nike is gonna come out with a whole bunch of colorways of it i just hope the colorways aren't whack and i hope they don't diminish the nostalgia and this shoe's proper placing in shoe history because coming out with a whole bunch of whack colorways and seeing those colorways sit on the shelves is definitely going to make this shoe not as popular in the public eye as it should be. Let me talk about this air unit. This air unit back in the day is, I guess you could say it was equivalent to the boost, the popularity of the uh, boost on Ultra Boost and NMDs now. You know how everybody is talking about, oh my gosh, the Ultra Boost is the most comfortable thing I've ever worn in my life. This air unit all around 360 air unit is what that felt like back in the day you know you almost felt like you were living in 2016 in 1997 that's how futuristic this shoe was this shoe is just a time machine on your feet i'm loving it I'm loving this shoe i would never give a shoe a 10 out of 10 but i'm giving this a solid 9.3 nine out of a ten let me know what you think about this shoe in the comment section if you're liking it if you're not liking it i know a lot of people are gonna like this shoe i mean there's not much you can say about this shoe that's wrong this shoe is just beastly like i said let me know in the comment section how you feel about this shoe if you don't mind hitting that like button smash that for me right now if you haven't subscribed already to my series subscribe 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 it's christmas i'm not gonna make any videos till next week i want you all to enjoy your family i want y'all please please be safe out there please have a happy and safe merry christmas i am dj swaver this is ottoman box openings and until next time peace Two.